Hi, it's Sam. In this video, we will be continuing the ggplot2 part 2 session under the interactive workshop for exploratory data analysis. So first, open the studio. Let's go to the selection 9, ggplot part 2. Okay, recall the GG is a grammar of graphics. Grammar of graphics. Okay, so in ggplot, the building blocks which you have created, there are these basic components, of, there are seven of them. There are seven of them. Okay, obviously, there is a data frame which you contain the data you are trying to plot. So, this is very important. Then, the aesthetic mapping. Aesthetic mapping. Determine how data are mapped to color, size, line width, uh, themes, uh, and so on. The so geometric mapping. Geometric mapping are uh, what you see in the plot the points, the line, the shapes, the box plot, the histogram, so different types of uh, geometric uh, features of a different type of graph. Facets is the panels used in the conditional plots. So it split a grand plot into subplots by some conditions. So facets is the one to use it. We have this, used this one in the first uh, two plot lessons. So we have used this, this few. So there are three more. What are the three more? Stats are statistical transformations such as thinning, quantile, and smooth which uh, did you plot to apply to the data before plotting. So they'll do transformations before plotting. Logarithm. Scale shows the coding and aesthetic map uses. For example, male equal to red, female equal to blue. So we can specify if we want to split the data points by color. So which value should be mapped to which color. So we define them. Finally, the plots are depicted on a coordination system. Coordination system. So it can be a, a Cartesian coordination system or a different type of coordination system we use. So most times uh, the Qplot has taken care of you, but when we are going to ggplot, we have more freedom to customize it. So let's look at. Uh, this is the palette which is uh, means in context plot. We mix paints, we draw pictures, things get messy, plots are built up in layers. Here mm. plots are built in layers, layer by layer. So base plot, and we'll add some aesthetic uh, effects to it. Add a title, change the line width, change the color. In the base plotting system, in contrast to the lattice system, when building the plot with ggplot2, the plots are built up in layers. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. Okay, we will keep using the MPG data. Recall the versatile of the qplot. Five argument. First three deal with the data. Uh, first three we deal with the data. So write it. First three. The fourth one is geometry. Okay. So record a verse to tile. We can kill plot now. Okay, we use a Q plot to refresh. Remove the end. See the end. Fourth one is the geom set to the concatenation of two string point. And uh, concatenate up two strings, point, and, and small string. The fifth one is facet. Facet equals to a formula. How many rows, how many columns? One row, three columns. DRE has three distinctive values. Okay, let's see. Okay, 
So quite nice, right? Quite nice. Okay, with three C fancy ones, three fancy cross, one for each, four, five, F and R. We'll see how GU plot works. We'll build a simpler plot using the basic component of the package and we'll do this in a series of steps. Okay, so let's see how GU plot looks. First, we'll create a variable G, which is a graph object. It's an output to a call of GG plot with two arguments. So GG plot with two arguments. This is layer by layer concepts. So we we'll do the basic things first. First, the MPG, the second will tell what we want to plot. In this case, is these two. We want our aesthetic to represent, so we enclose these two arguments in the function AES. Okay, tab. We should use AES. AES. Bracket. And we will have two views. The aesthetic mapping here is to map what to put to the x axis, what to the put to the y axis. So a few tricky things here is first we provide a data set we want to plot. Second is we want to specify what is the x variable we want to use, what is the y variable we want to use. And in this sense, ggplot will be smart enough to call a to use a scatter plot. It's because scatter plot will provide two variables, one x, one y. So when we provide these two x and y through the AES function, then ggplot will automatically interpret it as you want a uh, scatter plot. Okay, so g object is created, but nothing happened. So I have nothing. So run the r command summary with g to see what is a g. g is a graph object. It's a object. It has a mapping x maps to displacement y is highway gas uh, miles per gallon so this is how the mapping happens yeah. okay so it contains the data and we know how many uh, rows and columns it contains a mapping x is this y is this uh, specified and no facet no facet Facet none, facet none at the moment. Okay. Now we want to say GG geometric equal to plot. So uh, recently R has some enhancement. Even you print the G it will give you an empty canvas. It won't return you an error. So here it was mentioning that you will get error, but in new uh, versions of R and R Studio, there is no error. But you will get a blank canvas with the mapping provided and the scale mapping. How do we get a mapping? Because in the G graph object, we provide an aesthetic x and y so there will be no error okay now what we do is we say g plus geometric point so this is a layer by layer concept so this is a blank canvas we are not defining what kind of uh, geometric shape that we want to plot whether it's line or dot or area or whatever so but now we say okay with this base g object we add a layer called say okay let's use a point to show the data let's use the point so this is called geometric point bracket so it will call a point function to show the data okay 
point us to another layer is called a core to geometric. Okay, let's do another thing. I'll take a message give you calling a function and not a something that you didn't have to pass any argument. It's because the object has all the data stored in it, but it's just not displayed. He doesn't know how to display until you tell him, uh, tell it that that the uh, that's probably using points. Okay, and add to it another layer called. Okay, let's go smooth. Not quite. Okay, let's do this. Add them together. Okay. So in, uh, on top of the points that is displayed, we are layering another uh, layer, which is a smooth line with the gray colored uh, confidence interval. So next, we provide a method into the Geom smooth as its argument, and we put instead of plotting a curved line, we plot a linear line. So let's see. Method equals to LM means linear line. Okay, so instead of the curved line, now we see a linear line. And this is in day three and day four. This is actually a linear regression, simple linear regression with one x variable, one y variable, one independent, one uh, dependent. Uh, so this linear line fit into that. Excuse me. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, now using the geometric point plus smooth linear line, now we use the facet to partition the graph into three subgraphs. So on the right side of the tilt, there's only one row, and on the RV, it has three, three values, so you have three columns, uh, three subgraphs. Okay. Okay, next, you see that geometric point, linear, facet, plus the title. We add one more title there. Add one more title, scroll rules. And what else we can do? Oh, now we are doing something different. Okay, call the function. I give the points three arguments. Let's see the three argument. The first one is the color go to pink. Second one size equal to four, and the fourth one is uh, alpha. Alpha is the trans transparency. The transparency. Okay, you can see that uh, now the size of the dots are getting larger and uh, it's in pink color and it's transparent, 50% transparent. And in some area you see that uh, the pink color are darker, are darker, that means there's more data cluster uh, there. So the data appear in that area is dense. So it's pretty good. To for exploratory uh, data analysis. Okay. Now we say argument color set to try. Try type represent then g add to it a call to the function of with three argument. The first the color indicate let's put it call to the function. With argument set equal to that. Let's have a look at the solution. Okay, so geometric plus the point. So aesthetic is color equal to drive. 
then still keep the size 4 alpha equal to 1 dash 2 now so aesthetic color equal to dry earlier we say color equal to pink and if we want to assign a color dynamically we need to provide an aesthetic function there so as you can see uh, data are now split into uh, three colors and we can also see some area with a uh, very dense uh, green color so this area is with dense green color so which is uh, the car with the front wheels okay so it's pretty helpful on the legend right to decode the relationship between color and drive color and drive Now we are protect, pr practicing the labels, add some labels there. Okay, so we keep the color uh, same and we add the labels. The title should be the swallows and the labels for the X displacement and the Y is uh, mile H. So we replace the, the label for the original variable name. Next is okay. We keep all the things the same. Then we add a smooth line. The size is equal to four, so it's pretty uh, thick. Line type is equal to three. That says also dot, kind of dotted line. Method is linear, so I use a linear line to fill it. So SC equal to fourth. Okay. What did this graph do? That's why linear regression. My specify should be dashed and not continue. The size made it big. The SC flag told the ggplot to turn off the gray shades. The gray shades. So the confidence interval is not required. Here we see the confidence interval in the gray shades. So we turn it off. Finally, let's do a simple plot using the black and the white theme. Now, now it's time to look at the themes. The themes. Okay. So we specify the theme black, white, base family two times. So they have changed the theme. So now it's black and white. So this is called theme black and white. Okay, no more gray background. The font size also changed. Our font, font also changed. So we look at the previous one. Let's make it larger. The previous one, the next one. The next one, no, previous one, next one. Previous one, next one, next one. Okay. The limits of axis. Okay, so long. Let's interpret the result. Okay, so it's a plot of a variable, my x and my y type equal to line, and the y limit is minus three to positive three. Minus three to positive three. So some dots is uh, cut. It's there. It's being cut. You can limit it. Now, if we use the ggplot, what happened? You see, you see that? Uh, this is the ggplot. We create. A, we want to create a similar graph using ggplot. Now we say ggplot plus geometric line, not geometric box or geometric bar. So it's geometric line. Okay, you see one of the value is extremely high is 100, all the rest of the y, my y value is very small. Okay. Now we say we say y limit equals to negative 3 to positive 3. So you notice the y is now negative 3 to positive 3. 
with that one, the value at my x equal to 50 is just simply gone, disappear. Disappear. So this is the effect of having the limit. Okay, so entering the following answer. So instead of showing the missing values, we want the the graph look like okay, it's just extending to somewhere which the value is beyond the my y axis range. So with this effect, we need to call a coordinated system called Cartesian coordinated system. So in this case, it will connect the dots to a uh, value which is very very high. Now it will still draw these two lines. Okay, so in my not sure, but the plot indicate that it's larger than three by showing these two lines. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is the coordination condition, uh, coordination system. That's why let me set to this. Uh, we need this uh, to visually indicate or imply that there is some value which is beyond the uh, y range, y values range. Okay. Start with creating the graphical object G by assigning it to a core to K. Let's interpret the result. So G, once we assign, nothing happens. So X, displacement, Y, mile age, color, facet by year. So we now uh, uh, use a different year to color the data points. G hasn't come. So the type G, what will happen? It says R will return the arrow in red. So this is the answer we will continue, but in reality you have seen that if you would uh, display the G uh, graph, there will be no error, just a blank canvas will show. So yeah, R has get upgraded. We'll build it step by step. Zero arguments. So now we show the, show the points and it's split by Factor year, uh, so year 1999 and 1208. So we use a factor to convert the year from a number to a category. So these are years are being treated as category. Okay, category. So there will be two colors for two categories. Next. Okay, so it says G geometric point facet grid drive tilt cylinder margin equal to true. So we need some margin. So pretty fancy, right? Pretty fancy. So on the left hand side, which is DRV, DRV has four FR. So they are split rows by the different type of drive and split the columns by different type of cylinder four cylinder five cylinder six eight cylinder and we have a all uh, to combine this all combines these uh, all the in total four cylinders and it combines the uh, five cylinders and this place is the combine of all the uh, four wheels, four wheels, uh, uh, drive type cars. Okay, so there's a tiny version of the scatter plot of the entire data set, which is this area. All versus all. Uh, this area is the not splitted one, the aggregated one. <clears throat> okay, add a nice command to it, set to me. Okay. So this is pretty fancy now. Now we are adding a linear regression lines to each of the uh, facet plots, subplots. Okay, 
Now next we add the title. title. So the command getting longer and longer, longer and longer. So longer and longer. Point facet subgraph by drive and the cylinder. Then we add a smooth line which is a linear and the width of it. Then we don't show the s equal to false. We don't show the confidence interval. Then the color equal to black. And the labels x label should be displacement. Y label should be highway. Mile age title is just roots. Okay, this there is a legend for the color. Pretty nice, huh? Okay, so that's the end of this course. So ggplot is, uh, the concept is called grammar of graphics. We use geometric to select what type of uh, graph that you want to show type of chart, bar chart. Then we use aesthetic mappings to change the color, size, shape. And we add labels through the text and uh, add labels through the uh, X labs and the titles. Uh, and we can use facet grid to partition the, the graph into subgraphs. So this is a powerful ggplot. It creates a quite intuitive, uh, it's an intuitive way to create charts. And it, as you can see, uh, if you are, are using Microsoft Excel, it's quite challenging to, to create a uh, chart like this using very simple uh, command. Yeah, while in Excel, then we have to create each individual one by one, one by one. Okay, that's the end of this session. Thanks for watching. See you soon.